What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Extended ROM. This is the Pixel Extended version 2.7 and this is the 17th May 2021 build based on Android 11 of course and this build includes the G apps and if you read the notes it says this is a MIUI vendor based ROM not a OSS vendor based ROM and you need to flash the latest MIUI 12 vendor to actually flash this ROM depending on your region. My device is Indian device so I have flashed the 12.0.4 firmware and after that I have flashed the ROM file and flashed the fcrypt disabler because my storage is decrypted and flashed the magisk as well and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro click on the card right there. I'll put all the important links in the description box below too so do not worry. Let me actually go into the settings. And if I talk about the Android version section, this is how it looks like and the Pixel Extended logo seems to be pretty great and it still does that kind of animation. And if you tap on the Android version, as you can see, this is of course based on Android 11. Of course, let me go back. The extended version is 2.7 again and the security patch is of May 5th, 2021. So latest security patch that you get. The build date again 17th May 2021. The stock kernel is Perf G kernel. Here we have the build number. Talking about the system panel, this is how it looks like. We do have a system updater and from here you can check for updates and there we also have the device maintainer's name. The name shows as Ralph979. So yeah, that's great name actually. And let me go back from here. Here we also have the gestures. So if you go into it, we have the adaptive playback. Then we have the power menu and then we have the swipe trick screenshot. And yes, this swipe trick screenshot is actually working fine. And there is share, delete and scrolling option. And you can also edit it later. But yeah, the scrolling is also working super fine here. No issues with the screenshots, at least the three finger gesture, I mean. And we have the prevent ringing option. Then we have the system navigation gestures. And here, if you go into the settings of it, we do have the left edge, right edge customization, then the dead zone customization. Also, we do have the gesture bar length and the gesture bar radius customization. I have customized both over here. That's why if you're noticing the pill bar, it is quite thick and quite long. And we also have the haptic feedback and we have the back gesture animation and you can disable them. We have the two button and three button navigation as well. If you want to use it like that. And we have the quickly open camera by double pressing the power button, you can open the camera. And in the system panel, we also have the pop-up camera settings and there we get these kind of sound effects. As you can see, we also have the Star Wars kind of sound effects. Then we have the disabling option, of course, and camera LED you can disable and the stock keyboard over here is Gboard because this ROM includes the G apps, of course. Now let's talk about the home screen. This is how the home screen looks like. And if I go into the settings of this launcher, as you can see, this is the pixel launcher that is present by default over here. And if you look at the settings, we have only notification dots, then the at a glance, add app icons to the home screen, swipe to access Google app, then overview suggestion and the normal suggestion disabling option. But there is no double tap to sleep option, which is kind of a bummer, like the latest pixel launcher, the modded kind of one has the double tap to sleep, but this one does not have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. So that's how it is. But in the stock launcher to the left, we get the Google's discover page. As you can see, swiping up gets you to the app drawer, swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel. And of course you can search for any particular app over here. And like scrolling on this launcher is not a problem. It's smooth enough in my opinion. And as you can see the like widgets and stuff, everything is working fine here. And huge thanks to you guys. We just crossed 25,000 subscribers mark. So thank you so much to each and everyone who has subscribed. And if you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. Now talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like and you can edit and add multiple toggles. Let me show you. So you can add these kind of toggles over here as you can see, but I have already added a couple of toggles. Let me show you. We have the dark theme, then the like recording option as you can see, the screen recording option and we have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time with the screen recorder. Then we have the hotspot, do not disturb. Then if you go here, we have the data saver and the anti flicker mode. And that's it. We do not get any reboot toggle or something. Those things are simply missing from here. As you can see, we have only location caffeine. Like these are very minimalistic kind of toggles over here, very stock Android ish. And it does not give you the reboot toggle or the volume panel toggle, things like that. So yeah, only we have the anti flicker or the deceiving toggle that you can add. Not much quick toggles in my opinion. We do have the auto brightness switching or toggling option from here and you can adjust the brightness from here of course from the quick settings panel. Now let's talk about the stock camera of this ROM. Well we do have the Google camera go edition by default over here. So that is not a issue in my opinion because this is a pretty great like stock camera I would say and there is a night mode face enhance everything. 
if you get this camera over the very old kind of Google camera, this Google camera Go edition is actually better than that. So in my opinion, this is a great stock camera to begin with. So yeah, I love this stock camera, not an issue, but here I have installed the ANX camera also. And as you can see, it is working fine with all the lenses. This is the version 185R. I have flashed it with Magisk. And yes, front camera and stuff, everything is working flawlessly. Even rear camera 4K 60fps videos are working fine. If you don't know how to install the ANX camera on this ROM, click on the card right there or check out the description. Now let's quickly jump into the Pixels 10 and that is where you find all the customizations of this ROM because this is a Pixel extended ROM, it does have some customizations. So here we have the in-call vibrations as you can see. So vibrate on connect, call waiting and disconnect as well as there. Then we have the G visual mode and this is for the rounded corners and stuff. On the windows as you can see there are the rounded four corners and this is happening because I have selected medium from this and we have the status bar height customization as well. Let me go back we have the notification sound if active then wake up on charge disabling or enabling option. Then if we go into the lock screen we have the lock screen double tap to sleep lock screen charging info then the display media cover art and the music visualizer then we have the lock screen clock style and i have set it to fluid but you can set it to anything else and we have the four swing bit authentication but i would say it actually does not work over here like after a reboot i simply do not see the swing scanner icon in the lock screen so that's how it is as of right now but the option is there maybe it will work in the future updates and we have the fod customization from here you get the fingerprint icons as you can see plethora of icons you get including these like avengers kind of icon over here like iron man and captain america then we have the spider-man one so very cute kind of looking fod icons in my opinion and here we have the sea droid one then the like others the captain america shield and stuff these kind of things are also there but i have been using it with this one but plethora of fingerprint scanner icons that you get now we have the fingerprint pressed color you can change that from here FOD recognizing animation is there that is the fingerprint scan animation of course here we have these many animations as you can see we have the cyberpunk 2077 then stripe wave dna future hallowing molecular everything else is there then the cosmos macular and everything else is there for the fingerprint scan animation we have the unlock with fingerprint when the screen is off also let's move on to the status bar section and here we have the system icons over here here headset bluetooth etc icons you can enable or disable and Vault icon and view wifi icon both are there and you can select the Vault icon that you want to see and you can change that from here and you can change also the view wifi kind of icon so that is great over here and Vault is actually working fine i'll show you later on and we have the notification count and stuff for the status bar traffic indicator is also there then we have the battery style and let me tell you there are these many icons and then we have the battery percentage next to the icon or inside the icon and you have to change it from here if you want to see the battery percentage on the status bar why i'm saying this i'll tell you later we have the quick setting panel battery estimate then the clock option of the status bar and here we have the clock style am pm style date everything else now here we have the status bar brightness control so you can swipe on the status bar and adjust the brightness of the screen as you are noticing it is actually working fine so swiping on the status bar adjusts the brightness very easily and that is a really great feature for me at least. And we have the status bar double tap to sleep over here. No issues with that. That works fine. Vibrate on toggle touch in the quick settings works fine. And the column and row number customization is there. Tint quick setting tile option is also there. You can disable that if you want to and that's when it looks like this. And when you have the tint quick setting toggle style, this is how it looks like. Jumping into the hardware settings here we have the navbar gestures so you get the like gesture kind of customization again over here and advanced restart is also there so let me show you if I show you the power menu this is how it looks like we have the like smart home controls then we have the if you tap on the restart we can directly reboot to recovery or you can also go to the bootloader or fast boot then you can just reboot the system and we have the screen of power button toggle torch and automatically turn off torch is also there and click to export share screenshot is there then we have the volume panel and i have been using it with the AOSP expanded and with that this is how it looks like i can expand the volume panel just like this as you are noticing so yeah this works fine but you can also go with these other settings like the miui compact then the tiled audio etc options for the volume panel are there and this is how the in-call UI looks like and as you can see there is no call recording option over here but Vault calling is working fine no issues with that. Jumping into the battery settings this is how it looks like you can see the full battery usage by just tapping over here and this ROM offers great battery life no issues that I have had and you can see the screenshots from here so I would say you can get 6 plus hours or 6.5 hours of screen on time easily on this ROM no issues whatsoever 
and it can definitely like, give you six and a half to seven hours of screen on time easily every day and i have used the fast charges over here so up to 27 watt kind of fast charging is working fine and 18 watt fast charger is also working fine which comes right out of the box of course and there is the optimized profiles over here in the battery settings so you can like set par apps like performance profile over here it does not show you the benchmarking profile but it has this performance kind of profile over here and we have the battery saver mode then adaptive battery and turn on light when charging is also there but this battery percentage is kind of weird like i do not know why it's there because we can enable battery percentage from the customization itself so why is it there maybe they will remove it in the future but as of right now i have no idea why it's there and it actually does not work i have seen like enabling or disabling it does not do anything then we have the smart charging option so you can trigger charging level like up to 80 percent charge if you want to do that you can use this feature then we have the last full charge then the screen on time sadly it does not show you the battery charging cycle or the other things like the battery temperature and stuff are simply missing from here in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the dark theme and in the dark theme if you enable it as you can see this is like pure amulet black and we also have the night light then the adaptive or auto brightness live display is also there so you can control the rgb of the screen and styles and wallpapers options are there you can set a custom theme from here and if you go into the wallpapers as you can see we have plethora of like live wallpapers that you can download also normal wallpapers are there let me go back we have the screen timeout auto rotate screen then the colors are set to boosted by default and the display size and the dpi etc is there inside lock screen we have the always show time and info let me go back we have the double tap to wake the enable blurs option then the pocket addiction mode then we have the ambient display and we also have the anti flicker or the dreaming mode over here and if you go to the bottom of the display settings we have the theming options so here you get the accent color presets so plethora of accent color presets are there as you can see even evolution x yolo then the inferno red xiaomi etc options are there so plethora of accent color presets that you get also you can set the primary color over here so as you are noticing by default it will switch to the device default but if you set to amulet black the like background will be completely dark whenever you are using the dark theme but you can set these many options for the primary or the background color and we have the headline and body fonts and as you can see plethora of body fonts that you get so no issues with that and the fonts are not limited at all this is pixel extended you get plethora of customizations in terms of the options of the fonts accent colors everything else also we have these many icon shapes then we have the status bar icon style also we have the switch style over here these are the toggle style in the settings i have been using it with the material design too but you can use between these ones also we have the settings dashboard icons let me go back and in the sound settings this is how it looks like and we have the link ringtone and notification volume then we have the other things like dial pad tone screen locking sound charging vibration touch sound everything else screenshot sound you can also disable then inside me sound enhancer we have the youth edition and stuff then we have the like other options the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well over here on this rom is great no issues whatsoever also we have these presets as you can see and here we do get also the hi-fi audio option so if you have a really great pair of headphones you can use that with this kind of preset let me go back from here and if you go into the security we have plethora of options like the fingerprint and if you go into the settings we have the quick unlock then the scramble pin layout lock screen timeout and stuff and power button instantly locks or not you can set that i have already assigned my fingerprint of course so i'll show you by just from the always on display and this always on display by the way does move around it does not stay in the same place so yeah that is great and as you can see right now the time is also like changing right now it stopped whenever i said that and right now as you can see it's changing again so yeah from the always on display let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and as you can see it worked fine and let me try one more time and as you can see again it does work fine so no issues with the fingerprint scanner also the animations if you're noticing is working fine and from the lock screen right now as you can see the fingerprint scanner like is very reliable over here no issues that i have had with the fingerprint scanner over here talking about the face unlock let me just try to set it up and right now let's just double tap over here to sleep and double tap to wake now i have to swipe up i guess so yes i do have to swipe up for the face unlock let me try one more time i swipe up and wait for the camera to open up and as you can see right now it unlocks 
So yeah, the face unlock is working fine, no issues with that. Talking about the app lock, yes, the app lock is also there. And as you can see, if you tap over here on this lock icon, that app will be locked over here. And you can hide the notification from here, whichever app I have locked. Then we have lock app after instantly 15 seconds and the screen off option. I have been using it with the 15 seconds one works fine. Then you can also search for any particular app from here, as you can see. So yeah, very like, cool that you can search for any particular app and lock that particular app over here very easily and let me show you i have seen one bug over here with the app lock that is like if i open that app as you can see the figment scanner icon is somewhere else and that like other icon is somewhere else which is weird in my opinion like i have no idea why there is double figment scanner icons but i have to tap on this like colorful icon over here and then the app particularly unlocks so yeah the app lock is working fine no issues with that but yeah, those icons looks a little bit weird. So right now I have a couple of apps opened over here and on the recent panel, we can take screenshot and select some text and you can go to the split screen and pin over here. And if you go all the way to the left, then you can clear all the apps from here. Right now, let me open the particular apps which I have opened so that I can show you the RAM management over here. And Chrome still is in memory. Facebook is in memory. Then we have Twitter still in memory. Then Play Store still in memory. And Instagram is of course in memory and Google Home still in memory. Let's open Flipkart, yes, still in memory. Now, okay, I accidentally opened SBI card, which was not in memory. And as you can see right now, all the apps are staying in memory. So no issues whatsoever with the memory management. Spotify, Instagram, everything is in memory. So yeah, the RAM management over here on this particular ROM is just great. No issues that I have seen over here with the memory management or the daily driving performance in my opinion. No hiccups, no stutters. And if you wanna see the benchmarks here are the Android and Geekbench score of this particular ROM. So yeah, very good performance of this ROM. No issues whatsoever, like no hiccups or stutters or freezes over here particularly. Okay, Google. As you can see, the Google Assistant is also working fine with the voice trigger. Let me try one more time. Hey, Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant is working flawlessly with the voice trigger. So no issues with that. Talking about the banking apps, yes, they should be working right out of the box here, but I have flashed Magisk and even after that, I have SafetyNet working. And if you want to get SafetyNet working with Magisk, you can click on the card right there, which has the ANX camera flashing guide. Just watch that video I have shown how to get like the SafetyNet passed with Magisk installed and with Magisk hide. And if your DRM certification is L1, it should be fine for you. But as I have broken it permanently, it still shows L3 for me. So never mind if your DRM info, if it's L1, it should be L1 over here too. Since this is just a MIUI vendor based ROM. So no issues with the DRM certification over here for this particular ROM. So that's what I think about the Pixel Extended ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about this particular ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro? And yes, I have been enjoying this ROM and this is a pretty great daily driver in my personal opinion and has every bit of like things like customizations that someone would look for and some of the features are not working. That's fine. Like the force fingerprint option and stuff, but yeah, that's fine. Maybe they will fix it in the future updates. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.